Hi guys, in this video we are going to take a closer look at procedurally generating a city. And since this is quite a difficult task, we should get right into it. But before we can really get going, we need to understand what needs to happen in order to generate a grid of streets that looks realistic. Imagine Equatia. I've been doing a lot of research and I read countless scientific papers and I've came to the conclusion that L systems do not fit here. Why? An L system is never random because it is basically following a recipe. For a city, we want to have a generate button that returns a different city every time we press it. What good would a generator be that always have the same outcome or that you need hours of fiddling with to generate something that doesn't look like garbage? Or algae in that case. However, if you came here hoping for L systems, a link to a video I did about procedurally generated plans down below. But if I didn't use L systems, what did I end up using? Well, the keyword here is subdivision. I decided to use an approach where I basically give myself a starting set of lines by drawing them manually and then split these to generate a nice grid of roads. So in the code, I'm with every split getting a random percentile value, which will be the point of intersection. I then calculate the left and right side of my road. How many times I'm splitting and what values I'll enter will ultimately decide what my city will eventually look like. But let's jump straight into my favorite part, the code. Let's begin with our base classes. We need a class for a road that will hold information about its start and end point, a constructor, its length, and a function that will return the opposite end of the road. We've already used the class point for a road. This class must only contain the position as well as the road it belongs to. A constructor, a function that returns the vector 3 version of the position, and again, an override for equals. We will need these classes as we need to be able to describe our network which consists of points and lines. And finally, for our base classes, of course, we'll also need our intersection class. Now, before we can go ahead and split the roads, we need to give ourselves a way to draw roads initially. To do this, I wrote this function that is running in my UI scripts update loop where I'm basically casting a ray from the camera to my mouse position and use this to be able to save the position at the point of me left clicking. I add this point to a list which I then use in my add city center class. Here I am drawing a new road for every two points I made because every road always needs a start and an end point. The next thing we'll need to understand is how to actually divide the roads. This will happen in our road network class. If you remember my little diagram from earlier, you'll remember that I used the length of my existing street, which I can calculate by using its start and end point, and a random percentile to decide where to split my road. Once I figured out where I want my split, I need to calculate the left and right side of my split by first getting the perpendicular points and then use these to create my new roads. The length of the new road is also going to be a randomized value. Next up, I'm checking if my new roads are intersecting with any other existing roads. If they do, I'm also checking all of these new intersection points to make sure there aren't any super short or weird looking ones. Next up, I'm checking if my new roads are intersecting with any other existing roads. If they do, I'm also checking all of these new intersection points to make sure they aren't super short or weird looking by going through a list of all of them and checking their length against our min road distance value. After I've checked and validated both sides of my newly generated intersection, I'm patching them together. This is necessary to make sure our end result looks pretty as we are generating the mesh ourselves. Some of these fancier algorithms, like the two-dimensional intersection and so forth, are coming from Geom algorithms and I'll link them down below. Lastly, we need to be able to render our roads, which I'm doing using this function. We are now able to call our functions in our generator class and start generating street grids. However, a city isn't really a city without building, so we should get some buildings going. Now, when placing our buildings, we want some randomness, as it would otherwise look very unrealistic. I myself at least haven't yet been in a city where every building looks the same. 
We could just use random range or even combine it with a certain probability. But lucky for us, Unity has an inbuilt function that gives us a sort of organized randomness by using noise. Pearl and noise to be exact. In our evaluate road function, we are taking each of our roads and calculating the left and right side of it. We are then using this value to generate where to plant our buildings. We are giving ourselves a random value of 3, which means I'm trying to place at least 3 buildings in one spot. You can up this value, but that will make your generator run really slowly, as it needs to iterate over every single one of them. We then use the aforementioned Perlin noise function to generate a organized random value, by which we then decide which building to instantiate. Lastly, we need to check if our placement was really valid, and if it wasn't, we need to destroy the building, as we don't want any misplaced buildings. And this would be everything for this video. As always, the fancy version, including the source code and the UI, is going to be available for all patrons.